Uh, now, now this week, uh, I'm going to net. Well, next week I'm going to be shooting uh, Lewis's movie. We're doing the top of my movie. Yay! So I, I don't know. I'll try to get on next week and and do a live thing from the hotel if we can make that work. I don't know yet. If not, we'll put on something else. But. Don't worry, this week we have plenty of horrible things to tide you over, I feel sure. Two weeks worth of stupid in a one week bag? <sighs> when we get to the very first story, you'll 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 feel it. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide Catherine Radio did it. Audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. People said what we like to call What the fuck is wrong with you? You know what? We get so many breakup stories on the show, on the show, and there never, nothing good ever happens in these stories. Nothing that that, nothing that. Well, no, if something good happened, we wouldn't be covering them. No, no, or nothing even remotely. This is, and, and yet, and and yet, we can all see a little of ourselves in these stories. But this week. I don't see even the tiniest shred of anyone I know in this story. This has got to be the absolute ground zero, bottom floor, worst way to handle a breakup. Period. Man breaks into home and poops on ex-girlfriend's belongings. Ugh. And just look at him there with that look. He's got that look in his eye. He's like, yeah, and no remorse, no, no, no shame. Just, yeah, I pooped on her shit. So Michael Anthony Johnson, 27 of Florida, was arrested and charged after he allegedly broke into an ex-girlfriend's home and defecated on her belongings. Apparently, some of the things he, he, he defecated on were bed sheets, a glass kitchen plate, a wallet, and on a dresser. Johnson broke That's in... a lot of... That's a lot of poop! Yeah. Did he, like, stop off at the Taco Bell and stock up? Well, and also, did he, like, let a little out, hold it, move to the next spot? <laughs> some precision pooping. Right, like how do you, or did he poop all at once in one spot and then rub it? Uh, well, stuff? apparently Johnson broke into the home after the unnamed victim while, uh, while she was asleep. There were also three children inside the home at the time, and at least one child witness as Johnson pooped on several of the family's things. That poor kid! I can imagine the kid going to his mom's room and going, Mommy? Santa Claus got weird. <laughs> I don't know what's going on out there, but they know. I don't want their presents. Can we take them back to Walmart? Oh, Santa got weird. Well, I mean, do you know what it's like to have to shove your own poop through those air holes? <laughs> Game of Thrones topical. And just imagine him looking at kid. Shh, uh, don't say nothing. Shh, shh. We cool, right? I'm just gonna poop and I'm go. Shh, it, it's okay. No. That's really extreme. Like, I understand that you're upset about the breakup, but that is really extreme. Really? I mean, did, was he sitting around going, "There's only one thing for it. There, there's, there's only one thing you can do." When the love of your life tears your heart to shreds. There's only on, one way to express your pain. Poop on everything. Okay, got comments from the chat. That was a truly shitty thing to do. It was. It was. They're not wrong. Miracle puked down the stairs yesterday. <laughs> that was fun. Well, I... I was still sleeping. Dan was Dan was lucky enough to discover that. Surprise! Cats do that. They but leave she's you. a cat. You expect that sort of thing because she's a cat. I, I can't... You expect that sometimes she's just going to yak up her food in a really inconvenient place. 
Bridget used to puke in my shoes sometimes. That's how What's cats say they... Cats? Yeah, that's how cats express emotions. Not people. Yeah. No. Can you imagine a little kid just going, you know, that's not where you're supposed to do that. We have a potty. If <laughs> if, if you want me to show you how, I got a book. I have a book. <laughs> <laughs> we both went there. I have a book. I can show you. It's got pictures. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of poop. apparently the date is april 1st and everybody's very concerned that someone got one over on you yeah there's like three or four different sites with the same story look up at michael anthony johnson it's for realsies even the channel can't believe that no he didn't do that yes yes he did I mean, really? It, okay, John the Wizard. What a load of crap! Great, nice, nice. All the, all the. Don't do that shit. Scotch. That's all the, all the, the wonderful. Brings a whole new meaning to the term asshole X. <laughs> I mean, really? This what? This was a. This was a plan. Is the thing. I. This isn't Did it say liquor was involved. No, this and even still, this is not a spur of the moment pooping. That's like, true. You got to be saving it up. Either that, or you go, you like walked into Walmart and get give me two bricks of cheese and a box of X lax. You know, you went to you. It's like you went to Taco Bell and said, "Give me one of everything." Yeah. You planned for the, the, no. Taco Bell doesn't make me sick. Does Taco Bell make you sick? Yes. Really? Yes. Never had issues with Taco Bell. When I eat Taco Bell, myself and my colon become enemies. They have Pepsi there, so they're my friends. We fight to the death. So far. Clearly you keep winning. So far, but one day. I don't I don't want to give it the chance. One day. So let's go to something that did take some planning and yet still incredibly fucking stupid. So do you remember that episode of Mythbusters? You used to watch Mythbusters with your nephew, right? Do you remember oh, the, yes. the duct tape boat? Yes, I actually did see that one. Yes. So they made an entire boat out of duct tape. And yeah, they also suspended Adam from the ceiling with duct tape. That was pretty cool. Dan, my, my nephew wanted to do that. And I was like, yeah, no, we can't do that. <laughs> he wanted to do that to the cat. No. Um, they also did one where they froze blocks of newspaper to make a boat. Remember that too? No. Yeah, they like they like made this frozen boat. It was kind of ice with newspaper to, to make you know kind of this weird paper. The Pie Creek. That was it. It was like uh huh. yeah, newspaper and uh sawdust and they froze it and and to and it was neat. However, Mythbusters always says at the beginning of their episodes, don't try don't this, try at, this home. at home. We're what you call experts. And these guys were not. Clacton fishermen rescued from a nine pound homemade boat and that's not nine pounds and that's how much it weighs that's how much it costs that's about fifteen dollars <laughs> two fishermen went to sea to sea not in a lake not in a creek to sea in a homemade boat they built for nine pounds and they had to be rescued when their oars broke the pair in their 20s became stranded in the two in the eight foot vessel about 665 feet off the Essex coast, the boat, made from insulation boards, had been held together with coat hangers and glue. Look at this Here's thing. The thing. It worked. For a bit. They didn't have to be, no, no, no. They didn't have to be rescued because the boat was sinking. They had to be rescued because they lost their oars. It fucking worked. <sighs> They could have run into the same problem in a canoe they bought at fucking REI. 
it worked. Would you look at that thing? But it was seaworthy. It's but... not like they were drowning and bailing it out. It was functional. <laughs> they just lost their oars. I mean, I say seaworthy because it was able to survive the water. Clearly, you don't take a boat that small out to sea. That's not smart. But they built a functional boat. Would you, but would you, with coat hangers and glue and insulation? All right, so they MacGyvered it a little bit. <laughs> a little bit! A little bit. The guy even says, it says in here, it never sprung a leak. Been fishing in the boat all weekend. <laughs> Real, I mean, really, the dumb thing was they brought this tiny little boat out into the ocean. But if they were just out on a lake, like... <laughs> That's not what I would consider seaworthy, even... Well, okay, it's like lake-worthy. That's... that... that thing... that... it's insulation! But it worked. <laughs> they didn't drown, did they? See, now, now you're going to... Okay, now we're sending the wrong message to our audience. Because two weeks from now, we're going to have a story on here about some Didn't motherfucker. Did you once build a wall from scratch just so you could beat your head against it in a video? Yes! And I'm sending the wrong message. We're going to end up with some guy out in the middle of Lake Michigan on a boat he made. You spent time and money erecting a structure <laughs> just for the purpose of beating your head against it. Yes, I did. And I'm sending the wrong message. But if that structure... A perfectly serviceable boat. If that structure had failed, I would not have drowned. But it did fail. <laughs> they just shouldn't have gone out in the ocean. And they should have had life jackets. Apparently they didn't have life jackets. That is also dumb. <laughs> it's not the boat that's dumb. It's everything else they did. The boat is not the problem. <laughs> no life jackets and taking that tiny little dinghy out to sea that's your problem uh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm just uh, yeah but it worked it's, not pro it's probably not the, the, the argument the coast guard was happy to hear or who, who was, was the coast guard or what do they have over there I, I don't know. Um, who rescued them? Let me see I mean, here. I'm at, rescuing these guys. You had to be a little bit impressed. I was I, like, I, I'd be impressed they weren't dead. I'd be impressed that that boat worked. I mean, because it's not pretty. That that is that is an understatement. It looks like an unfrosted cake. Okay, well, what, what the thing is, you know what, the, the, it, it, you've seen like sheet insulation, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's just layers of sheet insulation glued to each other, and then they twist tied it with coat hangers. But it worked. <laughs> they did not get eaten by sharks. They did not drown. They did not have to sit there bailing the thing out. Like, it performed its function. Jamie, Jamie and Adam would be, scared, would be concerned right now, is all I'm saying. No, I think they would salute these guys. <sighs> Jamie would. Adam would be over in the corner shaking his fucking head. Jamie don't give a shit. Uh, well, speaking of poor planning, um, you know, when I, have you heard about what's the most stolen vehicle? I think if I'm not mistaken, it was for a long time that it was, what was it? The Taurus? Or no, it was a Honda. It was a Civic. I think it was the Civic. I'm not, 
But um, there were there or they were Hondas because they um, the Acura. That sucks because yeah. I have a Honda. Because of the resale value was high enough on them, and in other cases you steal a car, you're stealing it for parts, you're stealing it because you know, or even just they put. This is a crazy one I heard. The airbags have gold in them. Part of the the function to make the airbag work, it has gold in them. So people just really? bust. Yeah, they like some of the link connectors in it because it has to work. So they make sure make sure it does. So people bust in and steal the airbags, just the airbag because it has gold in it, or you know. Well, you hear about people stealing all the copper wiring out of houses. Yeah. To resell that, so. So, you would think that if you're going to steal a vehicle you would plan one that has a bit of value to it. Not the church bus. Church bus chase ends with use of tire deflation device. Officers and a handful of law enforcement agencies spent Thursday night in a chase with a church bus allegedly stolen from Fairhaven Baptist Church outside of Chesterton. The chase, which began around 8 p.m. and never went over the speed limit, <laughs> ended after well. <laughs> it's a church bus. <laughs> and after Portage officer set up a tire deflation device, um, Stephen M. Clark, 31, uh, faces felony charges of auto theft and fleeing, and a misdemeanor charge of driving while suspended. <laughs> Witness told police he was standing guard in church parking lot uh, in Westchester Township when a church was in session when he saw one of the church buses slowly leaving the parking lot. Or following the bus. Why was he standing guard? I don't know. Started following the bus and confirmed with church officials that no one should have been leaving the grounds with the bus. Notified police continue to follow the bus until police apprehended Clark. Um... Nowhere. It, it, this, is a, this is an argument I always used to have with my mother because we'd go to church and when you go up to receive communion, I would leave my purse on the pew. And she'd always say, you should take, you know, you should take your purse with you. You can't leave your purse unattended like that. And I'd go, mom, if I can't trust people not to steal my purse <laughs> in church, what am I doing here? Like, you got to think that's the one place in the world your fucking purse would be safe. Well, and this guy, okay, I guess this guy's reasoning may have been he wasn't in the church. So by the rules, you know, it's it's like in baseball. He wasn't on base. So it didn't count. <clears throat> That's not a baseball rule at all. Well, if you don't touch the base, it doesn't count. Okay. So if you're not in the church, it doesn't count. I'm just wondering why they have a guard outside the church. Like, what happens outside this? Well, I guess we know. <laughs> the guy comes up and steals the fucking church bus. But what, what good did that guard do? Didn't prevent that. A deputy with the Porter County Sheriff's Department said Clark may have been able to obtain keys to the bus from a lockbox at the front of the bus that was loose. Okay, so his plan was he has a target of opportunity, but it's a church bus. Yeah. Is there a big market out there for church buses? Uh, not that I know of. It's a big, slow, diesel honking motherfucker. But I'm not really up on my stolen vehicles bracket, <laughs> admittedly. Kitty, you're sliding. You're going to fall on the floor. Let's not do that, okay? Thank you. <laughs> She's grumbling at me. She's like, I'm sleeping while you're moving me. <laughs> okay, Shadowbird, Jesus is my getaway driver. No. You're such a funny old lady. No. Yeah, Jesus is not your getaway driver. <laughs> I mean, and I love the fact that the, the speed, the, the chase did not go above the speed limit. Do you wonder if the church bus isn't able to? They they put limiters on bus. I know they put limiters on, on school buses. 
I used to have a friend who had a bumper sticker on her car that said, never drive faster than your guardian angel can fly. I think that's a good rule when stealing a church bus. <laughs> Lady Disquette, Jesus, take the wheel. Screw you. I'm not going to be an accessory. You're on your own. How old yeah. is Miracle? Miracle is 12. She's earned the right to be a little grumpy. Yeah, she's a little grumpy old lady, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. I'm That's trying. I this... they didn't expect her to survive very long because she I... had some health problems, but she's made it a long time and she lives pretty good. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> she's like, why are you waking me? What do you have against my being comfortable? I'm just, of all the things to steal, the church bus. You're not exactly going to be be a badass at the scrapyard pulling up with other guys coming up with Maseratis, Porsches. You pull up, what'd you haul? Church bus. Well, maybe he had a bunch of friends that needed a ride somewhere. <laughs> He's just going to bring it back. Fuckers, we're going to Coachella! Everybody in! Hell yeah. <laughs> in the church bus. <laughs> Oh, uh, Grand Theft Auto St. Vincent de Paul. <laughs> well done. Uh, so have you ever had to call animal control because you've had a small angry animal in your near in or near your domicile? No, I had a father who was an Irish farmer. So any small feisty animals were trapped and handled by him. We had once where a rac where not a raccoon, uh, a possum, which are the bitchiest possums are nasty little fuckers, meanest little shits. Got into the got onto our back porch and just wouldn't leave. He wasn't doing anything. He just was like, "I'm not leaving." Fuck and you. And they are mean. And I like I went. I poked him with a broom. And he went like, "Ah!" I'm like, "Jesus Christ!" My dad got one. He used to have squirrel traps in the backyard, and there was a possum caught in the he take them like 10 miles away and release them again. Like he didn't kill them or anything, but he'd trap them and then take them and release them at the state park. But, <laughs> so like a little person got in there one day and I, I started, I like got within 10 feet of the cage and that thing started hissing and biting on the bars. And I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> I want your yeah. soul. Well, okay. Now imagine that, but instead of being a, a possum, or a squirrel, or even a raccoon, it's a naked, methed up guy. I don't think that falls under the rubric of animal control. <laughs> naked, meth fueled burglar bites cop during arrest. Now, listen to this. Police suspect a man was using meth Saturday night when he decided to break into a university district apartment complex, take off all his clothes, and hide in a small storage unit. Like you do. I would expect has not gotten naked and hidden in a small storage unit. Oh man, you don't get out enough. <laughs> Manager of an apartment building called police around 9 p.m. to complain that a stranger had somehow entered the secured building and was hanging out in a storage area. Police soon arrived after the call and found the man who was by this time completely naked. Inside the storage area, the naked man refused to come out. The officers had to move him by force. After a brief struggle, police arrested the man. During the scuffle, police say the man bit an officer's thumb. The officer was wearing gloves at the time. The bite didn't break the skin. That's one of those moments where you're a cop. You're going, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Because <clears throat> for a second or two there, you're like, is this guy on drugs or zombie? Hard to tell. Babies, but sure. Yeah. Hard to tell. It's Or, you know, what does he possibly have? This random naked guy who's running around on drugs, like <laughs> Ebola, hepatitis, God knows what else. Like Tara, you have to read the last line of the story. Oh, God. You gotta read it. 
Police say he had more than 25 grams of meth on him, though it's unclear where he was keeping it. <laughs> he had perfectly good clothes! He had pockets! He had pockets! Does meth come out in sharp little crystals? Yes! You have to smash that up. He had pockets. And yet, foregoed the pockets. Well, it says unclear. Maybe <laughs> that's where it was. And this reporter's just trying to spice up a boring story. Oh, my God. We can hope. We can hope, but we know better. Yeah, we do. This is, I mean, I'm, I would think. God, you gotta hope that was wrapped because, like, wasn't a couple years ago, wasn't it a thing that college kids were giving themselves vodka enemas because yep. they realized it got them drunk faster? And they didn't have, and they didn't have the smell on their breath. Right. You could pass Can a breathalyzer. Imagine if you shoved, like, unsecured meth rocks up your ass, what that would do to you? Well, maybe it might make you strip naked and hide in someone's storage. <laughs> this would, like, turn you into fucking Marilyn Manson or something. <laughs> you know, he just got beat up at a Denny's. Really? Yeah! I'm not kidding. Someone beat up Marilyn Manson at a Denny's. I'm not, I'm not shitting you. At a Denny's. Denny's. Well, it was 2 a.m. Where after LARP? Yeah, it's 2 a.m. Where else do you go after LARP? It's where we all went after the fucking LARP. Apparently, he's going back on tour with the Smashing Pumpkins. It's going to be like sad, crazy guys from the '90s tour. Um. Okay, now this next one. I know the price of flights. I know how expensive it is to fly. It it can kind of get a little daunting. More than a little. It can kind of get really daunting. However, alternate methods should include driving, trains, maybe even biking if you're, you're feeling adventurous. This, however is not the way to get a lower fare. Stowaway survives two-hour flight in planes wheel well. <clears throat> Didn't someone do this a couple years ago from California to Hawaii? Indonesian man took People a- People need to stop doing this, you're going to die. <laughs> Indonesian man took a free ride in the wheel well of an aircraft this week, surviving a high altitude flight of nearly two hours in thin air and sub-zero temperatures. Mario Steven Ambarita, 21, was spotted staggering around the tarmac at Jakarta Airport on Tuesday, shortly after the Guardia Indonesia domestic flight landed from Sumatra Island to the north. Case was quite a surprise to us. I should hope so. I should hope that would be a surprise. Not like, oh yeah, we got another one in the wheel well. Must be a Tuesday. It, it did happen before. Oh, yeah. In this country, I'm pretty sure it was California to Hawaii. It was like a six-hour flight. And that, that shit, because well, there's, okay. It's not like when you go up a mountain and the air gets a little thin and you can't breathe. There's a reason your airplane is pressurized and they have those oxygen yeah. masks. You... You can't breathe up there. You will die. Also, it's pretty cold. Yes. Also, holy shit, what if you fall? No, nope. I'm going to hang out in the wheel well. It's perfectly safe. I mean, I know the wheels come up. But. And the reason he was. Also... And the reason. Because yeah, he... he wanted to meet the president. President Joko Widodo. He wanted to meet the Indonesian president. Really? This was the best plan you had? No. Could you maybe write him a letter next time? Email? Say, hey, I'm a big fan. Like to meet you. Can't really afford it. 
Can you help me out? I voted for you. And I think you're swell. According to local media reports, he spent up to a year studying aircraft taking off and landing, had learned from the internet how to hide at the wheel well, and had made an unsuccessful attempt in the past to hitch a free plane ride. So this was... At least he put in some school in for, apparently this is a thing on the internet. They teach you how in a year of research does it not occur to you that this is incredibly dangerous? This is a really bad a idea. Terrible idea. Just because you can find out how to do something on the internet does not necessarily mean you should do that thing. You can find out how to do pretty much anything, anything on the internet. On the internet. Oh, yeah. Like, you can find out how to sodomize yourself with a squirrel on a power drill on the internet. That doesn't mean you should do that. There's probably a YouTube tutorial for that shit. It's really bad for the squirrel. You can. I know this. You can find directions to build yourself a fuck saw on the internet. Do you know what a fuck saw is? Is that like a, a seesaw? Professor? No, a college professor got suspended for running a demo of this product for his lecture hall. I forget he was teaching like politics of sex or something. I don't know. And they had a moderated, I forget what it's called. What's the saw called that you pull a trigger and it like does this? That's an obscene gesture I'm making on the air. A jigsaw? What's the kind of power saw called that, like, a reciprocating saw? And they took the blade off and put a dildo on it. <laughs> Fuck saw. Well, it certainly... On the internet. It certainly does reciprocate, I can say that much. Exactly. Just... I was pissed a bedazzled one of those for being the maid of honor in my friend's wedding, and I did not receive it. I have a beautiful mantle that that would look really good on. <laughs> They're really upset with me right now. You're... These are not the kind of life hacks we should be teaching people. And yet we are. All right. Our last story, I hate... I hate well, there shouldn't be any hack. You remove the blade. <laughs> <laughs> Dummy Dash says Bedazzled Fuck Saw is my band. Emily Dash. Bedazzled Fuck Saw is my band name. <laughs> They're opening for the Rectal Eels. Uh, nice Alright, our last story this week, and I really hate when I have to preface a story with something like this. The kid is okay. Bumps and bruises according to the hospital. Let's start there and work our way backwards because, oh God, kids, get ready to be pissed and appalled and and mortified and many other adjectives of a similar side. Do you remember what happened? Remember Michael Jackson when he had his little kid and dangled him over the balcony and the world lost its fucking mind, rightfully so? Yeah. We don't learn. We don't. We don't learn. <gasps> Mom dangling toddler over cheetah pit when he fell. Kids okay. I a mom was dangling her two-year-old son over a railing at the Cleveland Zoo when he fell about ten feet into a cheetah exhibit. Adler's parents jumped in and pulled him to safety Saturday afternoon, and he was treated hospital for a few bumps and bruises. The cheetahs didn't go near the boy or his parents, mainly because cheetahs probably thought they were the stupidest fucking things they had ever seen. What are they doing? Earl. Earl! What? <laughs> what are they doing? I sincerely doubt any cheetah is named Earl. You don't know. It just doesn't seem like a cheetah-like name. You don't know. You don't know. 
What are you doing? I don't know. That's not food, is it? No. Maybe? Uh, our food doesn't usually wiggle. Yeah. Or make that noise. <clears throat> Several eyewitnesses saw the woman holding the child over the railing. <laughs> They're cheaters! There's a reason they're separated from you by bars. There's a reason cheetahs aren't in the petting zoo. Yeah. Because they're not domesticated. See, Miracle is a domesticated kitty. She has gone through centuries yes. of breeding. She is a pampered fucking kitty. In fact, she couldn't survive making it to the end of the driveway by herself at this point. In fact, fun fact, cats domesticated themselves. They actually approached humans and integrated themselves into our society. Right. They were like, oh, you're going to do stuff for me. Yeah, and give All us right. food. Yeah, we like this shit. All right. Cheetahs didn't do that. Because cheetahs yeah. were like, no, we'll just kill shit ourselves. Thanks. In fact, hey, can we kill you? Just checking. You never know. Are you sure? Maybe. Did you know that even that even the common domesticated house cat can run faster than Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world? And a cheetah can run a lot fucking faster than that. Like, say, had that cheetah been a little hungrier, and you ain't been quite so quick, why would you do that? Are you trying to give the kid a better look? No, you get a camera with a zoom lens and you show him later. Yeah. He's two! He don't give That's a shit! It. There's a reason you are separated Bad. from them by bars. Because they are dangerous. All these stupid bars are in the way. We can't see, honey. Let's go over them. They're dangerous, and you should not oh touch my. them. God! Like, yes, I went to see those at the zoo once, and they were only, like, ten feet away from me, and there was just this small fence and a little pond and yes a little tiny part of me thought about jumping and swimming across and petting the hippo and then the other part of me was like no don't do that they will kill you that's stupid and so i didn't do that because that would soup that would be stupid and they would kill me hippos are murder machines they are but and i remember that before the stupid part of me was like let's go pet the hippo in fact, pretty much the entire point of nature is murder. That That's how nature works. You either murder something... You know, or... that was actually the original title of the Lion King song, but it just didn't scan right. <laughs> Elton John was like, circle of murder, it just doesn't Doesn't have the same thing, yeah, yeah. The way I'm looking for. It's either you murder or you are murdered, and hippos are on the murder end of the scale. So are cheetahs. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and just because animals might be a little used to humans coming and pointing and staring at them all, that doesn't mean they aren't going to be going like, oh, hell, shit's happening. It's it's happening. It's happening. It's finally happening. Because I'm sure one of those animals just waiting for the day. Mike says cheetahs didn't integrate because cheetahs never prosper. Oh... Well done, Mike. Well done. I was trying to figure out a cheetahs never win joke, but I couldn't make it work. Just Mike. <laughs> Computer wrote a cheetah. Wow, has armored hippos? You know, my nephew on Easter was telling me, he likes to tell me about his Pokemons. He said, Aunt Tara, I got a new Pokemon. And I said, did you? That's very exciting. And he said, I got a hippo Pokemon. And I said, that must be the best Pokemon. He goes, no, that one really stinks. It's, it's, Can't even do anything. It's Slowpoke. I should have got think. a Charizard. Yeah, Slowpoke is the hippo. I think so, anyway. I don't know. All I know is apparently it sucks. Computer, computer Ronin says, Cheetah. Ooh, five second rule. It just hit the ground. It's still good. <laughs> that poor that that poor kid. That that poor that that poor kid. All of the therapy. 
he's he's gonna for the rest of his life he's gonna see a cat and freak the fuck out and not know why. Or not. Eh, sure. I mean, it's not like they tried to eat him. He turned out okay. This is one you never let your parents. The rest of his life, he's going to see his parents. Yeah, you're not. You never let your mom live it, live that down. You know. Mm -hmm. Remember the time he tried to feed me to the cheetahs? Yeah. You're paying for college. Mm -hmm. You're fucking paying for college. You I mean, know that, right? To... I did try to climb into the bull enclosure that one time, but they liked me. <laughs> they didn't like my sisters, but they liked me. <laughs> I communed with them. I'm gonna get in there with you. No, no, no. My dad, being a responsible parent, ran the fuck over there and pulled me off the fence. That's what's what... wrong with you? Why are you doing that? That's what you do. Which you, which you are. My God, the... you take your child away, and those you know. Those were fairly domesticated bulls because it was a, it was like an old time colonial park, you know? Uh, they were used to people being close to them still. My dad was like, what the fuck are you doing? Get away from those. They will kill you. Because that's what you do. I, why? Why? Just. <sighs> why? The, the entire world saw Michael Jackson dangle his kid off that balcony and everybody went, oh, motherfucker. Didn't that shit sink in? I don't know about that. I was like, well, that was ill-advised. Well, that's that's what I said. What? <laughs> that's, that's what, fuck has many uses. Many different ways. It's a very flexible word. One of our most important. Fair. And it's just... it. How did that not register? That you were doing a dumb and dangerous thing. Pretty much whenever you include the words dangle over and child. Yeah, don't dangle your child over things at all. That just... Children should not be dangled. No. Because even if there's not a furry you know a furry machine of death on the other side of whatever you're dangling that child could fall and be seriously injured just by falling even if there's not uh, a dangerous predator on the other side of whatever you're dangling them over mother fuck and the story also points out this you know shit's happened before where kid where someone fell in like fell into a african dog exhibit the year before and died. It wasn't the parents' fault because the kid jumped, but it's no joke. Those those pits are no joke. No. Oh, that's 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 the first thing we learned this week is don't dangle your kids over things. What the fuck? Don't whiz on the electric fence. Don't dangle your child over the electric fence. I mean, did you not want to get him back? Were you trying to trade him in for a baby cheetah? They don't. Well, they, it's not a barter system. Here, I'll give you mine. You give me yours. That one's cuter. <laughs> He's all fuzzy. I like the fuzzy one. We learned this week that while airline travel may be expensive, pretty much the safest way to fly is inside the plane. In, yes. And that does like not. George Carlin said. Y'all can get on the plane. I'm going to get in the plane. There seems to be much less wind in here. Um, we've learned this week that when you, if you hear a noise from your storage shed, have both animal control and 911 on speed dial because it could be a raccoon or it could be a meth head. Better safe than sorry. Either way, carry a net. Yes. We've learned that it, it. You know what? You just can't make stealing a church bus sexy. That's just not gonna happen, dude. No. That is that is the least exciting chase. Even in even in Grand Theft Auto, if you steal a bus, that shit's not that's not really all that compelling. You're like, why did I steal this piece of shit? I got four stars on me. I can't get away. What the fuck was I thinking? Apparently, we learned that 
insulation is seaworthy. This is not, I don't want to teach them this lesson, Tara. I'm going to get sued for that. Ooh. I'm going to get sued. Send us pictures of your boats. Oh, God, Tweet no. Them to us. Someone's going to sink. Please don't dangle your children over the side of said boats. Don't do that. <laughs> Someone's going to sink and my ass is going to get sued. I just had to pay a couple thousand dollars in taxes. I ain't got money for somebody's insulation boat. Fucking insulation <laughs> boat. And finally, we learned this week. Breakups suck. However, your answer is not a plan. Poop, you yes. Said it before. Yep. That that poop is not a plan. Not in any circumstance. Not in any context. Poop is not a plan. No. In farming, it can be considered part of a plan, but it is not the end result in and of itself. Farmer doesn't go out and go, I'm going to put poop in the field. Why? Because poop. No, it's not a plan. You don't break into someone's... <laughs> you don't break into someone's house and poop on their wallet. Why? Because poop. No, 